question is a lot of the mythology that we see the stories that we see are we to assume that they are based in on mainland india or throughout the world or the, of the geography as we see it according to the scriptures you know most of the stories are based in the indian subcontinent it is just that you know they were aware of the tribes who were living around in fact you know in in my book on uh, maharaj bharat i have actually tried to identify the various tribes that were living around uh, across our borders and these were the barbarians who were trying to attack india you know from multiple times that has happened across our history that you know multiple invasions have happened so even the ancient times were no different and maharaj bharat story actually revolves around the various other tribes that are living uh, across our borders both in the west and in the east and india you know it was the cradle of civilization at that time i would say you know if you go by uh, by history it was india and china you know that were quite uh, ahead of their times you know compared to the other countries and other civilizations and then of course you have mesopotamia and sumeria and then later on you have the greeks and the romans and of course egyptians were there almost at the same time as our civilization but um, the events of our scriptures are primarily based in the indian subcontinent and uh, there's a reason for that because you know they clearly define the geography of bharat and they tell us that you know um, the land right from himalayas to the southern ocean is bharat and they tell us they talk only about the events happening in this region so there are instances when indian kings are moving out to conquer other regions when the other regions are mentioned the geography of other regions is definitely mentioned in all purans all the purans give the geography uh, you know the cycle of creation destruction the genealogies of the surya vansh and the chandra vansh all the purans are supposed to mention these but the details about other kingdoms and other people who may be living there are not given in detail primarily because these were books meant for people living in the indian subcontinent and these other regions do find mention when you when you find some tribes attacking the kings or the kingdoms in bharat or when indian kings were going out to conquer so uh, uh, the influence that we are talking about that we see you know is uh, on the western side it is because the indo european heritage was common you know it was the same people who were living or uh, you know who um, like if you believe uh, the western historians they would say that it was the indo aryan stock of people who came and populated this region but this is there's no there's no proof to support that theory it's just a theory on the other hand there's also the out of india theory you know wherein we mention that and our scriptures do mention stories like that you know there is there's a the story of a king called yayati who had five sons and you know one of them became his heir and he was displeased with the other four and he banished them out of india so he banished them out of the kingdom basically which was centered in the northern part of the country so some of them went to the south and they established kingdoms there but some of them went to the east and the west they went outside india and the, and they established uh, religions or kingdoms or uh, civilizations or societies there so uh, for example you know the uh, yavans um, who were uh, the mediterranean people or the greeks uh basically you know so they are believed to be related to us you know in the scriptures because it was the same stock of people who were moving out parsis we know have so many similarities you know the language of uh, the um vendida is very similar to vedic sanskrit you know and the customs the uh, rituals uh, of soma or of fire worship there's so many things that are very very common you know so these were same people who were moving out in the west for various reasons maybe for trade maybe for conquering maybe they were banished etc in the east it was primarily because of trade you know because indian traders from especially from the coastal kingdoms you know from odisha to the south everybody traveled outside and they went and established their kingdoms and they established ports the trading ports etc and that is why i see a lot of um, indian influence in the southeast asian region so there are different reasons for that influence but um, it definitely was a, a very prominent for um, the longest period and uh, it was only the advent of the relatively newer religions 
that you know that disconnect started happening